Hey everybody, welcome to Fenwall 3220 System Test 3. And today we're going to be focusing on everything about this uh, Halon Abort switch and more specifically on how that impacts the operation of the uh, agent release sequence and what exactly happens at the panel and how it's programmed when this button is activated, both when there's no alarm and when there's an imminent discharge of the fire suppression system. So this is a Fenwall manufactured Halon abort switch, even though there's not a ton of manufacturing to be done, um, and because of that, it doesn't have any model number that I remember. It's essentially just a blank cover plate like this one that has a uh, half-inch knockout in the center, or I think it might be a three-fourths knockout to accommodate that button, with a square D normally open push button installed in it, and so... It's pretty simple, it's wired into a dedicated abort zone on the 3220 panel. So uh, I think we'll just start off by taking a look at what it does if you know somebody accidentally bumps it, because it's, it's just a button hanging out here in the open. You know, It could be pushed by somebody who's messing around or somebody who just bumps into it, so we'll take a quick look at that. So right now the panel is sitting on the system status normal screen got the time and date information up there and everything and the uh, backlight on the screen is off because when there hasn't been an event on the system in a long time you know uh, well I mean in the, the scheme of things not really a long time it's like two or three minutes um, the backlight goes off so normally you know the screen wouldn't be lit up if I go ahead and press the abort button in we're gonna get an abort invalid trouble and hear that the panel buzzer will sound and if I let go that trouble's just gonna restore it's not a latching trouble if I let go of the button it just goes away so as you can see if somebody just happened to uh, bump into this button you know if I just tap it a little bit nothing's really gonna happen so I just thought I'd show that real quick because I never really showed that with the uh, abort button on my auto pulse system over there when I did the videos exclusively on the Halon system over there. So now let's get into a little bit more exciting part of the video and take a look at what impact this has when there is an alarm in the system. So just a quick refresher on the alarms that are installed on this system. Over on the left hand side we have a Fenwall 75-000015-002 agent horn strobe. That horn and the strobe uh, over there, that activates when there is an imminent discharge condition, um, so otherwise that one is silent. In the middle, there is a Fenwall 75-000010-001 horn. This horn activates both in a general alarm condition and in the imminent discharge condition. That one's set on a bell tone, which is a little bit softer for the uh, lower priority condition. And then the remote strobe is a Fenwall 75-000002-013. Uh, that has the agent lettering, and that strobe also will only activate if there is an imminent discharge on the system. Otherwise, it is off. These devices should all look pretty familiar because these are all rebranded Wheelock devices, with the two horns being from the MT series and the remote strobe being from the RSS series. The smoke detectors on the system are how we're going to activate it today, and they are a mix of uh, ionization and photoelectric detectors. The two lower detectors are both uh, ionization-based CPD7051 detectors, and the two detectors on the top are both photoelectric. They're from Fenwall's PSD series. The one on the left-hand side, I believe, is a 7154. Um, and then the one over on the right-hand side is a 7155. I know that for sure. Um, I think the other one's 7144. Um, zone 1 and Zone 2 are split uh, across where you see the two detectors stacked. So the detectors that share the conduit and are above and below each other, each of those constitutes a zone. And this system requires a uh, cross-zone alarm activation to set the uh, discharge sequence off. So both zones must be in alarm for the discharge countdown to occur. We won't really be touching the pole stations today um, because those result in immediate discharge, but 
for the sake of uh, putting it on record, there's two rebranded FCI stations down there, a Fenwall 29-32000-280, and another one that's very similar but ends in dash 287. They're essentially the same stations. But anyways, let's go ahead and activate one of these detectors so we can try out the abort button. So I'm going to start off by activating the PSD7155. The only reason is that this detector for some reason tends to be the easiest to activate with the uh, magnetic test button, so we'll start there. And whenever this decides that it's going to go into alarm, this will put the panel into the general alarm phase. And so there it goes. You can see there's no strobes active, and the middle horn is sounding bell on code 3 from the panel. You can see we have a message that says not releasing. It's only in general alarm, so the abort switch will not do anything until we activate another device. Now we're going to try to activate this uh, CPD-7051. These are a little bit more difficult to activate than the, uh, oh, there we go, actually. quicker than I expected. So now I'm going to go ahead and hold down the abort button. We see abort active and the countdown stops, so the system will not discharge the agent while the abort button is held. So now I've gone and silenced the horns, the strobe, and the panel buzzer continue to sound because they're non-silenceable. And I'm still holding down this button, so again, the system will not discharge. If I go back to the main screen, and let's say uh, there was an accidental activation somehow, or somebody has manually put out the fire, the person at the abort station can continue holding it down, and the panel can be reset. And we still see the abort and ballad while I hold that down. And I can go ahead and release that, and we're back to normal. So that's a situation where discharge was not wanted altogether. Um, so you can cancel that out by continuing to hold down the abort and then resetting the system. I do not believe you can uh, reset the system in the middle of the countdown without an abort active in the system. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and um, activate those two detectors again, and we can watch the screen as it goes through a uh, full discharge, but using the abort switch as almost like a pause or delay button. For example, if there were still people in the room, or um, you know, and it needed to be paused so it didn't discharge immediately, but eventually uh, the discharge was needed to put out the fire, so... Let's go ahead and put it back into the discharge countdown. So we have general alarm again on the first zone, not releasing. Now we get the release countdown now that the second zone is activated. Now let's say somebody needs to hold off the abort, or hold off the discharge. They can push the abort button. So if I silence those signals and the abort is still active, Obviously, you wouldn't really want to do that, but just so the sake of me um, speaking can be heard. When I release the abort button, it's going to go back to counting down from 30 seconds again, so that's kind of the manner where it could be stopped and restarted or what have you. And you'll hear those uh, signals reactivate as the countdown starts again. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, release the button, and we'll let it run through a full discharge cycle um, and see how that goes. So here we go.
and now we're back to a normal system status. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments down in the comments. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.